Welcome to my reaction to episode 9 of A Place Further Than the Universe. We're getting close to Antarctica now, going through a lot of shit on the ship, but uh, they're getting there. So we'll see what happens in this one. Let's go ahead and watch in 3, 2, 1, play. It's to do in their training. Gotta get real fit for their journey. Okay, that's what it's all for. We need to jump rope so we can get the steak dinner. Damn! Alright. One person's prepared. I think that would be for her mother. Hi. Oh! With me? <laughs> what a weird thing to say. <laughs> just... I'm in love, just in general. Not with you, I just needed to tell somebody. <laughs> like, who, who are you? I saw you jumping a rope and I just immediately popped a boner. I don't know what to tell you. So anyway, <laughs> I like getting more time on the ship. I want to see Antarctica, but ship time is fun too. I think they'll probably get there by the end of this episode, I would think. We'll see. But now, yeah, some, this is unexpected. Some guy, just this dude, is just in love now. So... I guess that's a thing that we're dealing with. I don't know. And there's the jump rope in the OP. All right, here we go. Antarctic love story, the blizzard arc. Okay, Zaizen Toshio, and he's not in love with Shirase, so he really was not confessing to her. He was just saying it in general. <laughs> Just to them, for some reason. Why? I mean, yeah, you are. How old are you? Oh, you want to be protected. That's cute. <laughs> Yeah, I guess this guy's not a kid. I don't know. I mean, they're pretty much the exceptions in terms of age on this ship. I don't know why I thought he'd be younger, but I don't know. He could still be youngish. And just be a weirdo. But yeah, I guess he's a little older than them, of course. So you just decided. Okay. So now we got to pursue this guy's romantic interests. Sure. Okay, let's just write about this guy's love life.
Yeah, you introduce a romance subplot, spice things up, get get some more viewers. You don't need to be in it though. So now we gotta we gotta find out more information about the captain. See if we can get these two lovebirds together. She's like, I don't know what to do with children. <laughs> She's like, I'm trying to play. <laughs> and she just, yeah, sounded completely serious there. <laughs> you shouldn't give money to people you don't know. I mean, sound advice. Although, does that mean I shouldn't go to the store and buy things because I don't know the cashier? It has to be you. It would be weirder from anybody else. She's got a strong grip on that pole. So this can also be an opportunity for them to close the distance between them. Through trying to get her together with... Toshio or whoever. <laughs> yeah, she just uh, she doesn't seem to uh, know how to talk to kids. Hey, they the penguin. There you go. There's a connection. <laughs> so you like pizza? You have a job? <laughs> She's not a little kid anymore. But then there's that. That's uh that's a bit awkward. But now everybody's here except for Shirase. How many men have you been with? Just a simple question like that. No big deal. What kind of men do you like? Do you like men at all? All right, interview time. Oh my god. Ah! Why don't you just leave her the way she is? Yeah. Someone like a cloud. Someone like free and like flexible, uh, can shift and change. I see. Well, you want to be able to grasp the person, but somebody who's always there. Although that's not true, sometimes there are no clouds. Sometimes you look up and there's just not a single cloud. But I guess I get where you're going, what you're going for.
that's something they're going to have to talk out. I wonder if that'll be in this episode. That's true, too, just in a practical sense. Her being on this expedition. It's helpful if you can talk to her. Penguins! There we go. There's your bonding moment. Take this opportunity. It means you need to uh, rain all over her. Take that to mean whatever you want. How about you just be how you are, and, you know, if she likes that, then you're good. And if not, well, then that's unfortunate. <laughs> what does to be like a cloud mean? I guess I should try to be that, and then go for her. Just, you know, go for it. <laughs> See what happens. Always been in a jump rope. I've been using a weighted jump rope recently for exercise. I slapped myself in the hand the other day. Not the ear, but... They're all listening. Seeing if anything happens. I'm glad they're talking. Yeah, I mean, she was an adult. She knew what she was getting into. Seems like she understood that. No. Well, then there you go. Yeah, e even if she... M <laughs> even if she might, like, logically understand that this is not her fault... It would be understandable to just kind of emotionally toss blame her way. Because <laughs> you feel like you need somebody to be angry at. And I'm sure she kind of feels bad herself, blamed herself for a while. That, yeah, like, being uncertain and thinking that maybe she will come home maybe today will be the day maybe i'll get home and she'll just be there and then it just never happens the penguins are attacking they've staged a revolution that'd be an interesting turn Okay, let's just fucking slam the ice. Let's do it. Tear this shit apart. Turns out this whole show was just a prequel to a dystopian show where penguins rule the Earth. They uh, commandeered this Antarctic expedition ship and took it back to Japan or Australia, or Singapore, or wherever, and uh, it all began there. Now I want to see that story. Mm. 
This is cool, though, watching them go through the ice like this. That's like the only thing they could talk about. <laughs> I guess so. Let's give them the one that they can't even reach. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. As you do, you gotta keep trying. Gotta break through all that ice. I mean, that's, uh, what better visual metaphor is there? Back up, keep pushing ahead. Back up and keep pushing ahead and break through it. No matter what. And she just kept jump roping. <laughs> Jumping rope, I guess. That's actually terrifying. I mean, that whole situation to have your, your friend out there lost. But I don't know, just the idea of being in the middle of Antarctica and there's a, a voice on the radio like that. That's like horror movie shit. <laughs> but it's just really sad. That then makes the whole situation even sadder. Like you! Oh my god, no. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, well, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in seeing what happens there. Like, I want to see if this guy finds love. <laughs> if he continues to pursue the captain. If he's going to go after her now. If I don't know, maybe she'll change her mind. Um... Maybe he'll just keep flip-flopping between different women. I don't know, but I kind of I kind of want to see a resolution there. Maybe later we'll see them and she'll come around to him. Maybe something will happen when they get there that makes her think he's okay. I don't know, but I, I hope we see more of that. That's kind of funny. But still, even if it's not fully there yet, stepping off the ship, pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Did you think it was going to be warm?
Can you do it? Can you take your first step? Uh, right foot, left foot, doesn't matter which, just one of them. Alright, that's fair. I would say all of you take your first step together, but it seems like there's just literally not enough room for that to happen. Okay, you two together. That's cool. Oh no, they can! They can squeeze on there! Alright, that was my idea, I just didn't think there was enough room. But yeah, they squeezed in there. It's all good. Pretty surreal for her, after wanting to do this for so long. In your face, all you dumb bitches back at school. Why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm fucking king of the world, assholes. You should have got that on camera. <laughs> should have broadcasted that. And everybody saw it. I'm like, yeah, sure. That's their new battle cry. Yeah, I, like I said before with Megumi, I like how this show explores other characters that you might not necessarily expect it to or necessarily need it to. Like, you might think, okay, you can just focus on the group of main characters and that would be fine. But to have a character like Megumi, or like Shirase's relationship with the captain, or that one guy and his relationship issues, is stuff that you might not expect it to have, that you could say that in another show, like, it might not have, and it might not feel like anything is necessarily missing, but it just, it adds a lot. Just getting to, to watch these side characters too, and they're all really good. So yeah, I like that. I like exploring all these other characters, and... It's fun and funny, and <laughs> I wish they had recorded that, but yeah. Progress! They're not quite there yet. This is a brief stop, but they have set foot very near their goal. And there's only four episodes left. I don't know what's what we're going to cover in that time. Is that right? Are there 13? I think so. You have a new message from Shiraishi Tamiko-san. Since there's only four episodes left, I do expect the Penguin Uprising probably to at least have its seeds planted a little bit in the next episode if it doesn't fully start. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.